The obvious fact is, as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, is that everyone has faith. For example, if you're an atheist, you believe there's no God. You don't know there's no God, because as I say, if there's no God, no one knows everything, and therefore no one knows if there's no God or not. If there's no God, who knows? Then, then, then no one knows, because no one knows everything. So therefore, so to be an atheism, I, okay, English, to be an atheist, is just as much faith as to be a theist. There's no, there's no difference in the amount of faith, it's just the object of the faith. And therefore, Krishna says, um, <clears throat> oh my God, I'm not that rusty. Um, Sarvasya Shadha Bhavati, oh. Uh, Sarvasya, Sanurupa, Sarvasya Shraddha Bhavati Bharata. That faith arises in everyone according to their according to their nature. So if faith, if we if we believe something because we just want to believe it, it would follow logically and necessarily, just according to the rules of logic, that you're an atheist because you need to believe that. And actually, if you think, okay, if I believe in God, there are certain payoffs, there are certain benefits, like, okay, I think I'm going to be saved, I think someone's watching over me, but let's look at the payoff, the benefits of atheism. No one in the universe is greater than me. So if you're a self-centered person, and you want to go, just be completely self-centered and egotistical, atheism is a great option for you. And so we can see all the different ways in which atheism fulfills a psychological need. And so as they say in English, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, gander is a male goose. How do you say it in Hebrew? Yeah, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. They also say the pot calls the kettle black. A kettle is like a thing you cook in. And this expression is an old expression from you know hundreds of years ago when they used to cook in these black iron things. So they say the pot calls the kettle black. Because obviously the pot is black too. So, so the idea here is that um, if you make the argument that we believe something because we, you know, for psychological reasons, then that would also apply to atheism. It doesn't mean that God exists. No, but it means that what you, what, what you were told, a very bad argument. Yeah, no. That's what it means. It's a really bad argument. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as, there's a certain advantage in theism. There's a certain philosophical advantage. By the way, there's a very interesting book written by a well-known sociologist in America showing that if you study religious people and non-religious people, just in a very simple, ordinary sense of religious, they go to church, they go to synagogue, they, you know, they just believe in things. It turns out there's a long list of benefits in being religious. They tend to have better marriages, they tend to be healthier, less drug addiction. I mean, there's like a long list of objective benefits among religious people, but never mind. Someone may be masochistic and therefore, you know, not want that. But the point is that from a philosophical point of view, from a philosophical point of view, if there is a God, hypothetically, if there is a God, then it follows logically that you can know that. It is possible to know that. Because if there's a God who, unlike certain conceptions, is not a psychopath, and uh, is not hiding from his own children forever because of some very strange psychology. Let's say there's a God who's just like, you know, a nice guy and not crazy. And therefore, the whole purpose of having children is so they can know you. Right? When you're a child, the greatest happiness for a father and mother is when you see your child growing and you see in the child's eyes or in the child's voice that the child is really coming to know you and to love you. 
And you're not just a, a machine that feeds and takes care of the child. The child's really starting to have that relationship with you. I mean, isn't it? I mean, that's the greatest happiness for a parent. And so God is the supreme parent. So if there is a God, then we, we, it is possible to know it. If there is not a God, it's not possible to know it. That's just logic. Because if there's not a God, how do you know there's no God? You're not God, and therefore how do you know it? But if there is a God, and if God is emotionally healthy, and chooses to communicate with us, then we can know it. So, in terms of, if, you're just, if, if you are considering two possible scientific experiments, and one of them, if your theory is correct, you can prove it's correct, and the other one, if your theory is correct, you cannot prove it's correct, which one do you do? Secondly, even if you're agnostic, which is more intellectually respectable, atheism is just kind of pretentious and silly, but if you're agnostic, if you're agnostic, and you just don't know, agnostic, by the way, from Sanskrit, agyani, you know, someone that doesn't know. So if you're agnostic, and so God may exist, God may not exist. If God does exist and is emotionally healthy, then um, I win everything. I, I mean, I, I can get infinite benefit. And if God doesn't exist, then I just die and, you know, game over. So therefore, what am I going to try to do? If, you're, if you fall off a boat, and the boat, you know, keeps going, and you see, let's say, another boat is coming, okay, if I, if I uh, signal to this boat, it may stop and save me, it may not stop and save me, therefore, I won't signal. I mean, that is stupid. So if you try to find God, maybe you find God, maybe you don't, but it's your only hope. It's your only hope to exist. To, to really, you know, to, to have everything good that you can imagine. So to say, this is the only real chance I can have a wonderful eternal life, but nah, I'd rather play golf. I'd rather have a beer. I'd rather, I don't know, just do something. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? It's obvious that the real psychological issue here is with the atheist. The real psychological issue is the atheist. Because to pursue something which promises, or at least possibly will give you everything good, to pursue that is normal for, for a healthy human being. If you run in a race, you may not win the race, but you try. If you apply to a university, you may not be admitted, but you apply. You try. You try to make the sale. You try to, if you fall in love with someone, you try to see if they can love you. So it is normal. Human beings who are healthy, sane, if there's a fantastic opportunity, and if without that opportunity, you're going to have a fantastically bad experience, then you try for it. So if that's the case, if that's normal, healthy human psychology, it would take some special psychological factor to convince one not even to try, to find infinite beauty, infinite goodness, infinite, you know, eternal life. And that special psychological factor is called envy. Of God. Basically, envy of anyone who's better than me, or who might be better than me. Because I prefer to live in a psychologically sick world in which I'm the center of reality, everything revolves around me, or my family, Self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is basically a type of functional but clinical insanity. Because it is obvious that we're not the center of reality. Does anyone here really think that you're the center even of the earth or the galaxy or, or anything other than your own existence? Baby, I tried. 
That's the one. It's a baby. We try it. Close the eyes, no world. And when I open the eyes, there is father. Close the eyes, no father. I'm the center. Yes, yeah, an infantile psychology. <laughs> so, so to be self, to be self-centered is to be really functionally insane. I mean, you, you can still function in the world with all the other crazy people, but it's, it's a state of madness. And, and so you could say that from a philosophical point of view, to be self-centered is to be mad. And so to, to, to prefer madness, self-centeredness, over the only real hope you have to achieve infinite good, there's obvious, I mean, if you want to talk about Who's got the weird psychology? <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, we should go for it. Try it. <laughs>